so we have a few few minutes left for questions. Uh, one question is from Chris from Neuwenhuizen, whether uh, the policy support exceeded the corporate liquidity shortfalls, meaning if you sort of add up all your numbers, whether you can see that firms actually were able to increase their cash balance. Yes. Definitely, this is what we mean that most uh, money went to strong firms. In those days, again, we don't observe actual, you know, uh, 2020, 2021 cash balances, but our model predicts that definitely what happened. Now, to check in real life this happened or not, we need real life data. And the only work so far I know is the uh, work uh, from BIS, uh, Benoit Cure, and uh, co authors using French data by looking at the actually what happened to cash balances, matching firms uh, to the policy take up, the, the amount of policy they receive. And they, they find actually very similar results to us. Again, only for friends, uh, but they find that, you know, a lot of money went to these firms, you know, kind of, you know, could, could have survived without the money, but also they didn't find any zombification. So there's definitely based in that sense, but maybe, uh, you know, yes, strong firms got this, they increased their cash prices, but maybe we didn't create uh, so much uh, zombification. So that's kind of the, the, the good good part of this message. Okay. Um, and then, um, so you, you tell mostly a positive story for the advanced economies because of fiscal support. Does it mean there are no long-term scars? Either, let's say, debt remaining high or some reallocation needs that would call for further accommodation of monetary policy? Yes, that is that is definitely correct. There can be further scars, and that's exactly what I wanted to communicate with my last point, that we should watch uh, monetary policy and financial markets, right? Because there is a lot of debt, not just government debt, but also corporate debt. This corporate debt is higher, actually, in advanced economies. A lot of large firms just went to the market in advanced economies. They just they just borrow. They increase their uh, corporate debt, for sure. That In that sense, for the future, uh, there can be scarring and there can be, uh, you know, downside scenarios if we are not careful with monetary policy and if we are not careful with, with general working of the financial market. That's that's exactly it. Okay, and then um, there's a conjecture here since, of course, you cannot incorporate bankruptcy costs in your model. Um, is it fair to say that your output loss is sort of a lower bound so that these policy support measures may be really well for improving, especially in these developed countries where sometimes bankruptcy costs can be very, very high, especially yes. in Europe. <laughs> yes, no, exactly, exactly. You're right. And we cannot incorporate that, and that, that's exactly how to interpret it. But I mean, if you really start getting details of this bankruptcy stuff, I mean, it's amazing. So uh, I, I really, at this point, recommend you don't look at these type of figures that show you, oh, this much bankruptcy and exit uh, during uh, Lehman collapse and European crisis, and look, nothing happened now, because this is very dangerous, these type of messages. When you look at these country heterogeneating bankruptcy code, just in normal times, forget the COVID, normal times, and now what happened to COVID? It is a mess. I mean, they're just Germany. Germany, actually, basically, when you have a liquidity shortfall, you go and file for bankruptcy. Not with, You don't even make insolvency. You make liquidity, you file. Germany, uh, stop that. You, you just cannot. Even if you have a liquidity shortfall, you cannot file. So um, many, many things like that. So uh, it is going to take us some time to sort this out. Uh, we also interpreted the lower bond, but I mean, once you start bringing this type of heterogeneity and what really happened artificially during COVID, on top of that type of bankruptcy originality, things, things can uh, change, of course. Mm -hmm. And last question, um, can your model also um, show sort of the, well, when you do the, the prediction of your model, can you show sort of the evolution of bankruptcies? Because uh, at least in Europe, bankruptcies actually came down during COVID quite substantially. Now they're starting to pick up but just a little bit. So when you sort of do the sort of linear projections of your model, can you sort of mimic that data? Uh, yes, we can do that, but on, on purpose, we are not doing that because then you, you are going to say that, okay, the, the mod, this model is the only thing that will give you 
this. But of course, as I just told you, there are all these things. But on average, uh, you know, maybe, you know, that you can take that seriously. And we have a full offset, actually a negative number uh, in advanced countries. Remember, I put you minus 0 0.4, and that's pretty much going to, on average, match the experience of advanced economies. Correct. Okay, well, lots more interesting questions, but I unfortunately have to let you go because Thorsten is waiting. Okay. Great paper. Thanks so much, Shepman. Thank you very much.